Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. Great. Now listen, 
There is a railroad engineer coming here this afternoon. And if he likes this place, then maybe he'll stay and help, too. So, where shall we begin? Let's see you with the painting. Oh, it's a beauty, isn't it? It's called a mural. And it shows the way people used to travel and how they travel now. And if you use your imagination, you can almost hear it come to life. Drop a nickel into this here jukebox. We have to play the song. Well, I'm all set, Rick. Uh, what should we play, Tex? Why are those noises in there? Where's my song? Oh, it's like a kid looking in here. Yes, he can't see anyway. So don't miss this one. That's a good lad. Can't do a job halfway. What's worth doing is worth doing well, I say. And that goes double when you're doing my windows, because they're double pains. A pain in the neck and a pain to clean. Do you know what I see when I look at that clean window? No. The inside of the switch house. What else would I see? Well done, lad. What's your name? Matthew. Or is it Matthew, Matt, Matthew? And you may call me Mr. Conductor. Well, you're a good worker. You know who'd like you? My friend Thomas. Thomas isn't really you? Dear me, no. Thomas is a steam engine, and he lives on the island of Sodor. You are interested in trains, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Splendid. Then I'll tell you a story about my friend Thomas. You do like stories, don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Very well. But first, I have to find my whistle. Ah, here we go. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine, 
with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler and a short stumpy dome. He's a fussy little engine too, always pulling coaches about ready for the big engines to take on long journeys. And when trains come in, he pulls the empty coaches away so that the big engines can go and rest. Thomas thinks no engine works as hard as he does. He loves playing tricks on them, including Gordon, the biggest and proudest engine of all. Thomas likes to tease Gordon with his whistle. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? One day after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon, the proud engine, began making his plan to teach Thomas a lesson for teasing him. Almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time, Gordon started so quickly, they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Come on, come on, puffed Gordon to the coaches. The train went faster and faster, too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. Last, they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled, and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next, he went on to a turntable, thinking of everyone laughing at him. And then he ran on to a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon, now you know what hard work means, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just puffed slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. Maybe I don't have to tease Gordon to feel important, Thomas thought to himself, and he puffed slowly home. Thomas got a little carried away with himself. It can happen to the best of us. Whoops, I must be going. Goodbye, Matt. I'll speak to you soon. And don't forget those corners. A lot. Listen, Matt, remember I told you he's a railroad engineer that's coming? I wouldn't mention any of this to him. You know how grown-ups can be. He may not understand. 
I know. Oh! Hello. I'm Stacy Jones. This is my nephew, Max. How do you do? This is my granddaughter, Tanya. And my name is Henry Cupper, locomotive engineer and master mechanic. You can call me Harry. Well, welcome, Tanya. Welcome, Harry, to Shining Time Station, what we hope will be the best train station on the Indian Valley Railroad. And we can show you the help of an engineer of your experience. Well, the railroad asked me to stop by and have a look, but uh, I haven't told them yet I'd take the job. Oh, of course. Well, why don't I show you the station? Mm. Now, would you mind showing time around? Okay. Thanks. Let's start out here. There's a little guy who lives in the wall. He's about six feet. He's a conductor. set up my workshop. Don't know where I do that. Perhaps over here. But then folks will be traipsing through it all the time. Oh, no, no. Your workshop is right in here. I've never had my own workshop before. I've always had to share. But of course, I'd want to make some changes, put everything in its proper place. Oh, no, son, please don't touch that. Those are my railroad tools. You can hurt yourself. This, this goes too nicely. Look, careful, son. 
When you're on the railroad, you have to watch what you're doing. If you've come back to clean the windows, they haven't had a chance to get dirty. What are you going for? Railroad work takes me everywhere, Master. You don't spend a lot of time in one place. It's a traveling business. I was just off traveling with Edward. Who's Edward? You don't know Edward. Of course you don't know Edward. You didn't know Thomas. How could you know Edward? I'll tell you a story about Edward. One day, Edward was in the shed where he lived with the other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, said Gordon. He wants strong engines like us. But the driver of fireman felt sorry for Edward. Would you like to come out today? Oh, yes, please, said Edward. So they lit his fire, made lots of steam, and Edward puffed away. The other engines were very cross at being left behind. Edward worked hard all day. The coaches thought he was very kind and the driver was very pleased. I'm going out again tomorrow, Edward told the other engines that night. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Next morning, Edward woke up to find nothing had changed. Gordon was still boasting. You watch me, little Edward, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off to do some shunting. He liked shunting. It was fun playing with freight cars. He would come up quietly and give them a push. Then he would stop and the silly freight cars would go bump into each other. Oh, they cried, whatever is happening. Edward played till there were no more freight cars. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon was very cross. Instead of nice, shining coaches, he was pulling a very dirty freight train. A freight train, a freight train, a freight train, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it, oh, the shame of it. Edward laughed and went to find some more freight cars. Then there was trouble. Gordon can't get up the hill, the porter called to Edward's driver. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not trying. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy freight cars hold an engine back so. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, replied Edward's driver. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. I'm ready, said Edward. No good, grumbled Gordon. They pulled and pushed as hard as they could. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, puffed Gordon. I will do it, I will do it, I will do it, puffed Edward. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. And almost before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, he said proudly. He forgot all about kind Edward and didn't say thank you. Edward was left out of breath and far behind, but he was happy because he had been so helpful. At the next station, he found that the driver and fireman were very pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink, and the driver said, 
I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a beautiful coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the shed. And the very next day, he did get a new coat of paint. You're good at small jobs, and you know what a big help that can be. Is the paint still blue? He's talking to the wall, isn't he? Oh. Is he all right? Sure, he's fine. Uh, uh, Matt, oh, you know how to talk. <laughs> Matt, are you going to come to work at Shining Time Station? Well, uh, Harry, I, I mean, uh, Mr. Cupper hasn't made up his mind yet. Looks like the station's got itself a passenger. Can I help you, sir? Yes, a one-way ticket to Keeping Hog, Alabama, please. <laughs> Strange sort of fellow, isn't he? <laughs> to visit me at Shining Time Station. Yes! <laughs> Matt? Is this the cover? It's Harry. Would you please run and fetch me my two box? The station needs a little loving care. <laughs> I want to get started as soon as possible. Ah, thank you, son. <laughs> I think we're going to be friends. What made you decide to stay at Shining Time Station? say exactly, but there's just something about this place. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Waiting there for you So much to see So far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side Hopes to hold on to Who knows how far you'll go To a shining time station where dreams can come. 